This is the pre-pre-show to 2024, Journey to the Juvenile. The first three months of a horse's career, I want to put all the tools I'll need for the rest of its life. Okay, we are here at Price Performance Horses. I'm with Cole Price. and his beautiful wife is over here off camera. But you guys, today is a special day and I'm so excited. A lot of you guys have been with me in this channel for 15 years and you have followed each horse's career, but this is a really special new thing that we're doing and that is bringing my horses to somebody like this that's so legendary. This is Cole Price. Thank you so much for Thank allowing you. me to come film in your place. Cole is a million dollar rider in the NRHA. He was seen winning the run for a million. You've done a thousand other things that I'm probably gonna miss. Um, but he is currently showing a really cool horse named Finals Bound that I'm such a huge fan of. And a lot, a lot of other really incredible horses. And Cole had some openings. And I didn't think he would ride barrel horses, but he said it's not his first time to ride some barrel horses. So. I've done a little bit of everything. <laughs> So I brought my two-year-olds over here. You guys are going to see two T-Wagon babies, a JL Dash to Heaven, and a Knickknack Caliente Firewater, a full sister to Smoke Show that you guys know and love, is here. She looks nothing like Smoke Show. But I want you guys to see the program. A lot of you guys have so many questions about how to get your horses started. What do I look for in a trainer? We're going to get to see a new level of control. We're breeding them to be faster and faster and faster. And I think the people watching this channel, one, are horse nerds. Two, they love to talk training horses. And three, a lot of them want to build confidence and have a lot of fear. And I know why, but I wanted you to talk a little bit about your program and what we're going to see today. So foundation is everything for me. And that starts from the very first time we walk into the round pen. I'm a firm believer, if you want this horse to be soft and respectful in entire life, you establish that, that commitment right off the bat. To me, discipline leads to a happy horse. I do believe that. So right off the bat, it's very, very important for me to, that I establish, I'll do the pulling, you do the giving. I'll push you off my leg, you soften up. And it's pretty much, we start off from working them in the round pen, we start flexing them on the ground a lot, a lot of lunging. It's not your typical lunging, like I pull on them a lot. I wanna, I wanna move their feet, I wanna challenge their brain. Pretty much what we're gonna start off with doing in the round pen is just a stepping stone into once we get on their back. Now, like, like I said, it's a stepping stone, so we'll disengage their hindquarters a lot on the ground. The very first thing we're going to do when we get on them is we're going to flex them and disengage their hindquarters. So to me, it's very important to get a starting point. And once I got my starting point, we just start building off it, building off it. And I want to get control of this horse's body right off the bat. To me, it's very important for a horse to go into the arena and understand it's got a job to do. And when it does its job, it's done. When a horse knows exactly what you want and the message is really clear, it's able to check the box to make you really happy as a rider. And I feel like when you have a horse like this, then you don't have a horse that you want to get rid of. You're not asking a bunch of questions like, is this the right horse for me? You have a horse that you know knows how to check all the boxes for you. And you know, the goal is to own this horse for a really long time and win a whole lot of stuff with it. Yep. I just put my old NFR horse down that's 34 and that horse 34 years, it would be a real problem if that horse was bad to be around or bad on the ground or whatever else that maybe might make me where I wouldn't want to be around that horse as long as we were. But when you have a horse that knows how to go in and perform, it makes for a really relaxed horse because sure. I think that the misconception from reining to barrel racing or even English or whatever else is that we have these crazy horses that do all this crazy stuff. And really we're going really fast and we have a lot of riders that are searching for confidence. So when you have a rider that's really tight, always putting pressure on them and sending all these mixed signals, you have a horse that has a mixed reaction. For sure. So having a horse that has a really clear path of how to make you happy, I think just creates a really long, happy relationship between horse and rider. For sure. And I think confidence comes with control, right? Obviously when you're out of control, you're, I mean, nobody's confident, right? But also to me, we got to put ourselves in that situation every day to get a little uncomfortable. That's how you're going to get better. But it's important for me to take to teach these horses that just because you're a little uncomfortable, you still got to use your brain. So my job as a horse trainer 
And a lot of it, my program is teaching these animals how to accept pressure. I do not believe if you don't ever put pressure on a horse, they'll just one day accept it. And the reason I say that is it would be like if I never played baseball and I decided one time I want to try to play the Major League Baseball. Can you imagine how fast that 90 mile an hour pitch? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you would just die. You know what I mean? It would come really so have. fast. But if you played your whole life and you get used to the pressure, it's not really any faster than what it should be, you know? So I think when you, when you teach a horse how to accept pressure, it also eliminates a lot of anticipation. So I'm gonna use another baseball analogy. I think anticipation comes from fear or worry. I really do. That, I that sounds very basic. I agree. So this would be my comparison. If you're a second baseman in baseball, I talk like I'm a big baseball player, but I'm not. But it's just, <laughs> I use this analogy. If you're a second base, baseman and you can't field the ball, you're just praying to God they don't hit it to you, right? Right. Well, if you step away and get better at fielding the ball, pretty soon now you're on offense. You're like, come on, hit me the ball, hit right. me the ball, hit me the ball. So I think anticipation comes from obviously lack of confidence, but lack of control and, and fear in the horse. So anytime a horse has fear or anticipation, their brain says, I'm out. They're, Absolutely. They don't want to stick and around. that's when it gets really dangerous. For sure. For that's sure. when you start looking for the exit. Like, so it's scary. We start, I mean, probably from the first time we put them in their own pen. You know, it obviously it's not as much pressure as later on in, the, in their life, like what you see maybe the two-year-old I was riding. I could put more pressure on him, but I've taught him from day one, you know, maybe he can only accept 1% of pressure. Well, the next day, I, I challenged him to take 1% and then maybe 1% more. Well, he figured out pressure, you know, and I'm not just talking pulling on him, but I put him in a bind where his brain's got to go, okay, stop and think. What do I need to do? and look for the answer instead of looking for the way out. A horse's natural instinct is to look for the way out. Sure. So from day one, we established that, that ability to accept pressure. Now, some horses don't accept as much. Right. But those ones, to me, a lot of times, if you just stay at that stage and wait for them, they'll come around, wait for them. You know, it, I had some two-year-olds that you watch in a month, you're like, holy cow. It's ex exactly the same way and for in, us. The and light I had, comes on yep. and you're like, man. I got, and I'll have some two-year-olds, you'll start them, and you know, you're know, you like, holy cow, this thing's, it just doesn't, it can't take any pressure. Right. And it seems like you just sit right here. And when I'm talking pressure, I'm not talking a lot of pressure, but pulling their head around, sure. make them start thinking. But all of a sudden, you know, it, it might take two months, and all of a sudden, bam, it gets it. And now it surpassed that one that you thought was was incredible That's already. That's one thing I've learned through this whole process is it's very tortoise in the hair. Patient. Don't give up on them early because Patient. I've I've nearly sold a whole lot of world champions. For that sure. Have been like, oh man, this for just sure. doesn't feel right. Now, one thing like for me in my program uh, that we kind of talked about, we didn't talk about it on camera, but for me, I like to get all the resistance out of my horse, horse's body, and I believe any time a horse pulls on your hand, their feet get slower. Right. For sure. So anytime a horse resists you, they're going to jab their feet or they're going to put you in a it's position. Exactly what we see in barrel racing. The big thing in fraternity colts is when you leave the second barrel, yep. their head comes up and they stop moving their feet. And you're like, man, if he would have just put his head down yep. and come through himself and bring his shoulder uh, uh, around. And a horse cannot use their back or drive up underneath themselves, hollow it out. Right. Right. So if I can get that horse's resistance out of its body, it makes it a lot easier for me to help this horse when I need to or set myself up for success. Absolutely. I think that we're going to have a lot more questions and we're probably going to have to come visit for you sure. again. I know that I'm going to want to see these colts in about three weeks from now because there's no telling how far along yeah. they'll be. And I think we'll have a whole lot more questions from the comments and yep. we'll take those if you don't mind answering Absolutely. those questions. But you guys, I want to include some clips of what of Cole on some of his finished horses so you can see him. But we're going to take you to the arena and show you all the parts of what a two-year-old looks like in Cole Price's program, what my two-year-olds currently look like in this program, and then we're going to follow their journey until they're all the way running at the BFA. This is the pre-pre-show to 2024 Journey to the Juvenile, and I hope you guys are so excited. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. We'll be back. So I want to talk about the body control I do in my program. And I start it early, early on. So for me, the first three months of a horse's career, I wanna put all the tools I'll need for the rest of its life. So I'm not really that concerned about maneuvers. I'm not that concerned about um, doing a whole lot of loping. 
as you'll see when we go back we'll talk we'll show you these two-year-olds that had about two uh, excuse me two weeks of riding um, I'll show you about what they're doing loping but really I want to go start at the walk and then the trot and I'm gonna break this horse's body all the way come all the way through and the way I was taught is I was taught to break it in five body parts so I have the head and neck the pull which would be vertical flexion the shoulders the ribs and the hips now I believe you cannot move one without affecting the other so it's very important for me that I'm gonna break this horse body control body completely through but yeah I'll be able to put it back where I want so I'm gonna completely break his body apart so the very first thing I'm gonna start doing is what I call lateral flexion and I want to be able to take this horse's head away from him and squeeze my inside leg and get this horse to completely wrap around my inside leg now one thing you're going to notice on this horse is I don't have a lot of resistance. You're going to see this horse is very, very soft in its face. Um, it's, it's soft in its belly. I don't have resistance. Now obviously in the beginning we're going to have a lot of resistance because they don't know. But I want to be able to come right here, pull to my hip, squeeze my inside leg. If he's pushing on me, I'll, I'll kind of roll him off my spur. You see right there he got off it and he picked his, picked his belly up and he completely softened all the way here. I have no resistance from head to tail. Now, I say this is head and neck, but I'm actually breaking the rib cage loose completely first. And I want all that resistance. Now, do you notice when I let go, this horse will hold this, hold this position. That's because every time it, it took its head away from me, I've squeezed my inside leg and I said, get back in there and get soft. One thing I want you guys to notice is, is the respect that my horse has off my hands and my feet. It's very important for me to get my horse's body soft through my legs, not just my hands, and that's a very misconception. Now, I can work this horse off my hands, but it all came from me getting all the stiffness out of his body. So the next thing I'm going to break loose is the pole where I can take a hold and I can squeeze my legs and this horse is that soft off my hands. And I'll be able to do that at the walk trot. This horse, I can do it loping. I can do it kind of speeding up, almost running. But I want to be able to squeeze and get this horse's body straight, straight as I want or bent, and make this horse give its chin completely. Now, why is that important? Physics say, a horse cannot lift its back without giving its chin. My point, if, I, if somebody told me to lift my back, the first thing I'm gonna do is bring my chin in and roll my back, okay? So a horse cannot lift its shoulders or its back hollowed out like this. So I'm gonna teach this horse early on to be able to give its face and, and say super soft off my hands. To me, that is one of the key building blocks for this horse's future. The next thing I'm going to do is what I call a counter bend, and I'll, I'll demonstrate it at the trot. One thing I want you guys to notice, like my horse, when he guides around here, he's super quiet, super relaxed. I spend a lot of time, and usually every day in my warm-up, doing my lateral flexion, I just spend usually 10 minutes moving my horse's body around. And you notice this horse here, it doesn't really want to go anywhere, and he's super soft. I spend every day just checking my body parts, making sure everything's broke loose. Now in the counter bend, what I want to be able to do is take this horse's head to the outside, squeeze my leg, and when he comes off my outside leg and I'm keeping forward motion, I release. I have a little resistance there, so I'm just going to stay in there and make him get off that leg there. And I let go. As soon as he comes to me, I let go. One thing that I try to think about, I try not to release my horse after they give. Meaning, if you watch, you probably, maybe you can't see it, but as this horse starts to come off my hand, I let go. The reason is the horse's first reaction, once it gives, is to take its face away from you. So I don't want that horse thinking, once I give, that it's gonna pull its head back. I want him to start thinking, as I'm coming to the, to the release of pressure, I've already beat him the release. That is one reason I think when I, it doesn't take me as long to get a horse soft because my release is as soon as he starts to give instead of I wait, oh he give, 
Okay, I try to release as he's giving. Okay, I'm gonna play around with my counter bend a little bit more. Teaching this horse when I pick up my hand and move it across his neck to get off this rein, but to move its shoulders. So I wanna be able to move his shoulders in, out. Now like there I got a little resistance in my legs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push him off my leg. I want this horse light enough that I touch him with my calf there. He gets off it. If he does that, I'm gonna push my spur, then I might roll it or tap him off my leg. But to me, these horses need to be this soft where I can just touch him with my jeans and get him off that pressure. Okay, the next body part I'm gonna work on is the rib cage, which is my side passing. I wanna be able to do it super straight. I also wanna be able to do it bent. Okay, and we spent a lot of time on these two-year-olds just jogging around. And I might pick up and two-track his whole body across, just like this. Same thing, if I put my leg on, I can control this whole rib cage, his shoulders, his hips. To me, this is the, one of the best things to do because I'm keeping the shoulders and the hips together. See, I can push this horse off my leg, off my leg, off my leg. Now again, I'm gonna say this, if you guys notice, I don't have a lot of resistance in my horse. That's because I've spent a lot of time teaching this horse, but also, once it, get, once it understands it, I go in lighter, meaning I don't always wanna have to pull as hard as I can. If I go here and I, and I don't get that, that softness I want, I might kick on him and say, hey, get off that. It's your job to get lighter to me, but I also wanna be fine tuning. I don't wanna have to go in that heavy all the time. Now the last thing I'm gonna break loose is his hips. Okay, and what I like to do is be able to put my horse on a straight line. And if I pick up my inside rein, I can block his shoulder and move his hips up. Okay? Now, I'm gonna explain why I do this. I believe if, I, if this horse keeps its hip in, if I'm gonna get more mechanical, I'm talking about his outside hock stepping up underneath me, this inside shoulder has to stay up. It physically cannot drop, okay? If I have it, I like to say I put him in a C, which is hip in, looking to the inside, kind of wrapping around my inside leg. I got my calf on him here, holding that position. I really think that any horse should be able to do this. It doesn't have to be a reining horse, barrel horse, pleasure horse. They all need body control. Trail horse, to me, I want to be able to push him here. If I put my leg back and change, he should get in there and get soft. Another thing I spend a lot of time doing is backing. Now we're gonna start backing these two-year-olds, but I wanna be able to take a hold and make this horse back up without a lot of pressure. It should not resist my hands. One thing if you notice, everything I do with my hands, my horse moves its feet too, okay? I wanna be able to walk forward. If I take a hold, this horse softens its face, moves its feet backwards pretty straight. He's trying to find his balance there. I just wait. I believe if you can break this horse's body uh, loose completely from the get-go, it really sets yourselves up for success. Meaning, rather than waiting for the problem to come and go, I don't have a tool to fix it, I can go forward and when that problem occurs, I know exactly. I can take, take that horse away from the barrel or whatever and I can step away. I already got control of it. So, to me, I think of it as like you wouldn't build a house if you couldn't run a drill or a hammer or a saw or anything. It just doesn't make any sense, but you'd be surprised how many people try to ride their horses that way. So I want to get full control of this horse from head to toe at the walk and the trot um, before I even start thinking about trying to do stuff loping around. Another reason I do that, it's a reason I probably start riding my horses usually January the two-year-old deer. They're not really that big and strong, but I start making them use their body without just wearing and tearing their legs, and I can get a lot accomplished in 25 minutes of riding a horse. As you're gonna see, these two-year-olds had had two weeks already, and they're pretty respectful. They came out in the arena and they did their job. Um, another thing I'd like to touch on, why I break my horse, and I want them that soft, 
you will find more resistance and stiffness with speed, okay? So I don't expect this horse to be that soft going wide open. Physically, probably not possible. But I need to have a foundation to go back to to get this horse's body uh, where I want. Not only his body, but his mind is where I want. If I don't have control of body, I, I am a fish out of water. But let's just say I start going fast and I find a spot. I'm gonna back up and go, okay, there's a spot in my foundation. I need to be a little more aggressive to dig into and get this horse soft. But for me, a horse that's broke loose in his body, like this horse here, he's set up to go do anything that the rider or owner would want this horse to do. And he's respectful about it. So I think the two-year-old that Luke is on has had a little bit less time out here. And this is one of our very first exercises we do. The reason I like to do it, um, it's pretty much, I'm, we're making this horse carry us and use the whole arena. And we're also working a lot of steering. The biggest thing I'm looking for is like this horse that he can be on a loose rein and he's not really leaving you mentally. He's just loping. I love how, how much self carriage he has. You know, it just looks like a joy to ride. This is, like I said, the first thing. I call this the dog bone. And it's gonna have a series of circles in the corners and straight lines. Uh, it's called dog bone because it looks like a dog bone. And it's just kind of a little pattern that we just kind of roll through. Really spend about the first two weeks. I love that right there. That horse wanting to quit when he relaxed. Um, but I'm gonna teach this horse to carry us. Not necessarily run out ahead of us, just lope. Now, for us, that's great. That horse has got a lot of rate. Now, um, he's gonna go the opposite direction here. All he did was he, qu he just quit riding right there. It's very important for me, the very first things I wanna teach this horse is forward motion to carry us and then also rate. I personally do not like a horse that when you quit riding, they just keep going. To me, that's something I'm not paying attention to. And, and we'll go into a little more detail of how we teach that here in a second. Just do the, go the other direction on the, the dog bone. And you'll see like he might not be as good one direction. That's not a big deal. If he changes leads, I don't really care at this point. I'm more or less interested that we can lope forward, pick up the lead, and that horse is just gonna guide around this arena. Normally there's a bunch of horses in here, but I just wanna just be able to put this horse on a straight line, drop our hands down and this horse carry us. You can kick him forward if you need to a little bit. So you see where this horse is a little more wiggly this way? That to me is just lack of forward motion. Okay, if he picks up the wrong lead, honestly, we don't care. We just pull him around, do a one rein stop, and we'll go again. Very simple stuff, but we're making this horse already come out in the arena and use its brain. Hey, come here. Come here. So Luca's going to work on some one rein stops here, and I like to do it at the long trot. And this is where we really start working on rate. So these are the very first two things we do. He's going to squeeze this horse out there. Go ahead and squeeze him out there, long trot. When we're working on this, I don't really care where they go. As long as when we squeeze and say go, he's going to go, and he's going to carry us. You can kick him forward if you need to. Like that horse is almost sucking back too much. So you'll see Lucas will spank him on the butt. I like doing that a lot more and I like kicking on him right away. So this horse here, I think I would get him long trotting a little more and get him a little free. You guys notice he's got a lot of suck back, which is good because he's probably good enough minor that he figured out when he sits down, he gets to quit. Um, and this is something we like to do at the end of the ride mainly because we're starting to put that, that rate into this horse. So he's gonna figure out when he's a little bit more tired that when he sits, he gets to quit. And we'll just flex him around. So already we're starting, this is, we start this early, early, early. Probably, probably about the second ride out here. Okay, squeeze him out there again. He's gonna squeeze his calf. If he's gotta go to a spur, he will but I'd rather him tap him on the butt and just make him get out there. We're working a little steering, but honestly, as long as this horse is carrying us, using his ears and going forward, there, perfect. 
This is kind of a fun deal to make a game because, you know, we got cattle over there. So like if this horse would look the other direction, it just quit riding and see if he pays attention to you. If not, do a one rein stop. Dana, I want you to go ahead and go out there. So this colt's probably a little bit farther along. Um, no real reason, he just kind of came on a little quicker. One thing that's very important for me, I will not skip a step. If it takes that horse a month to learn that, that's the starting point of all our horses. So it might take a month, it might take two rides. Some horses pick up on it quicker. Now you're gonna see Danon's already gonna start lateral flexion. And if you guys notice, we have both of these horses in a hackamore. Usually I like to ride for about 30 rides or so. And the reason is I like to get all that, res as much resistance out of that horse's body as I can before I go to its mouth. And what I, what I have found in the past, if I teach this horse the exercise and how to do it softly, when I put the snaffle in its mouth, I'm not hanging on its mouth. All of a sudden it goes, oh yeah, I can relate this pressure with this exercise and they pick up, get soft real quick. So, so Danon's not, he's gonna start chipping away at making this horse stay in there a little bit when he releases to his knee. It's not that real big of a deal at this point. We're more in, interested in when, as soon as he takes a hold and flexes and puts his inside leg on, that horse is gonna start wrapping around his inside leg. See how soft he is right there? Danon's just taking a hold. That's one thing, I wanna take a hold and close my fingers and then I'll pull. This horse, Danon really doesn't even have to pull. He's just closing his fingers. And that's through repetition. And also, if this horse gets a little heavy, Dana might bang on his sides a little bit, if he needs to. I start teaching these horses that they got a job to do and they got to come out and use their brain. The fun thing about a two-year-old is they're like a sponge. So anything you start teaching them, they can pick up. But if you don't start making them use their brain right away, it's amazing the stupid, the stupid things that they will start figuring out to do. So Dana's already going to start counterbending this horse. So he's going to start counterbending or reverse arcing, start teaching this horse to move away from his leg. You know, it's a very beginner stage from where my horse was, but it's a starting point. Very important to, to get a starting point. And all this stuff, we've just started doing it, trying to do it, build off of it. Is it good in the beginning? Absolutely not. Will it do this in the beginning? Absolutely not. But if you just sit there and wait, it'll happen. I look for 1% each day. There you go. So you can see this horse is already starting to give its face just a little bit. That'll probably be one of the, one of the later things that we'll do in a hackamore just because I want to relate. I, I want to go from the pressure around its mouth, around its nose, I want to get the body first. So we're going to start using this horse. You're going to see it's not always pretty, but that's fine. One reason I like to teach these horses how to flex and be pulled around because if this horse grabbed its ass and spooked at something, I can pull its, pull its head around it and it's gonna stop. Take all the power away from it. But also, it's the building block and getting a horse soft and supple. I love that there, that's, oh, that's good that there. Here just freaking out. And you guys notice this horse is not, neither of these horses are pissy. Uh, meaning when, when he goes to his leg, it's not swishing its tail, it's soft. The reason it, it's that way, one, because we don't teach these things it's acceptable to lay on you, but also it understands the release. To me, a lot of your horses that get tail swishy and you know ignorant, it's because of push and resistance. So we're already going out going at that horse, getting it soft. These two-year-olds here, they're only getting ridden about 20, probably 20 minutes a day. We'll play with them on the ground, but um, I keep these rides short. Now you can see Danon's already starting to two-track this horse. We're starting to get the rib cage broke loose. Just play with it. It's, you notice it's a very beginner step. It's very important this horse understands I'll do the pulling, you do the giving. I do the pushing, you do the moving away. We established that right off the bat. One thing I think is very important you, you're you laying the foundation for a horse right now. If I want to teach this thing to be heavy and stiff, I'm going to allow it to be. If I'm going to teach it, be, teach it to be respectful and soft, I'm going to expect that. That teaches, that comes from the very first time we step in the round pen. You notice there's not any, any attitude. Look how soft that horse is. Licking his lips. To me at this stage, that's perfect. And I love how this horse, 
Dana, just sit there and hang out. Now, one thing I want you guys to watch, watch the way this horse is gonna flick its ears. It just took a big deep breath. He could probably sit on that horse for 20 minutes and it's not gonna move. It's just quiet. The reason is that horse has learned to take advantage of it not moving its feet. If you wanna come out and, and be a turd and be an idiot, we're gonna put you to work. Now that we have a starting point to get control of this horse, we're gonna come out and say, hey, you don't wanna be respectful, we're gonna move your feet. Anytime this horse is gonna do something wrong, I'm gonna move its feet in, in a way of suppling its body to where it's, it's helping me set, set myself up for success. That's pretty good, I'd get off. That's one thing we do every day on these two-year-olds. Before we get done, we're gonna pick their feet up, we hobble them, but I want this horse to be a complete gentleman on the ground. Just wait. <laughs> to me, uh, an obedient horse a horse that has a lot of respect is a happy horse. And this horse is getting set up for the rest of its life. I really do believe a horse falls back to the first thing it taught. It was taught. When it's not gonna know what to do, it's gonna fall back to being soft and supple. And riding is only part of it. This horse is gonna have to get his feet done, get in the trailer. Like I said, this horse has been hobbled. It's our job to teach these horses to be a, be a kind student and have respect for us. I would rather me be the one to put this horse in a bind rather than waiting for it to get itself in a bind somewhere and then freak out. Also, your horseshoer will enjoy doing your horse's feet if they stand still. All this takes is, is tinkering. Okay, I'm never in a hurry when I'm working with a colt. This kind of stuff is better to do at the end when they're tired too. If you do this in the beginning, they're fresh, their brain's not with you. You notice this horse pretty much a ground tie. It's perfect. <laughs>